Yes, I can. Perfect. So I'm, I'm just going to roll a recording and I'm going to roll the streaming at the same time. And then I, if something goes wrong with the stream, I'm just going to upload the recording to the YouTube so you can rewatch it afterwards. Let me just quickly check on my phone if it's actually rolling. So there's a different device. So theoretically, if it shows anything here, then the stream should be live. Come on. Right, okay, at least it loads. Uh, it's just playing, so hopefully. Can I do a full screen? There we go. And it's. Yeah, that, that seems to be running fine. Cool. So we're live, and I'm going to be coding the backend for my uh, project that I'm doing for uh, building products with JavaScript. Now I have the notifications here. I think I should mute that. Um, yes, thank you very much. Thank you for saying this to me. Uh, let me just think how I can mute Chrome notifications because I don't want to have them all the time. And maybe I'll just close the Gitter chat. So if you want to talk, please write to the Twitch chat. I have it opened in a separate screen here so I can see everything you write there. Okay, so. Um, I'm going to be finishing the backend for uh, the project I'm doing for uh, my free course building products with JavaScript and um, I hope I will finish the whole thing today. If not, if I don't have enough time or you know I get tired or something, I'm going to do another live stream where I complete it, but I think we're going to do the most uh, of it today. So before we actually start, uh, what I generally do is I create a new file where I write what I want to do over the session of development. So here's the thing, we're building the API for the server. So I'm going to outline the API this is going to be the first section. I'm going to outline the database structure, right? That's going to be the uh, second uh, section. So first one is what are we going to need as API? We are going to need the uh, user's API, which will include uh, login, which will include registration, which will include user profile fetching. Uh, and obviously, uh, let's say user profile gets and user profile uh, update, right? So we need to be able to change the profiles. I mean, that's a minor thing, but it should be relatively easy to do. So those are the users section, then we would need the um, questions. So for questions that would be basically create question. Um, no, not question. Come on, stop fixing my things. Create question, um, update question. Sure, why not? Uh, we want to change if we screwed up, right? Um, then we want answer question. And there's a question basically, um, how do we want to do we want to freeform answers to the questions or do we want to predefine? I think predefine don't work really well for predictions. So we're going to do a freeform and uh, then use some um, machine learning to train the classifier based on those inputs to see who was better, basically. Okay, so we got create update answer. Um, I guess maybe delete question would be good, right? Um, I mean, answer can get actually can go maybe into update, but we'll see. Uh, so part of update, maybe we just, you know, it would be enough to just say, okay, here's the answer from user and we just put it inside of the question itself. Um, I think that's actually it. So basically we just need a login here, or like the authorization parts, user profiles and questions. Uh, later on, we'll add some real time stuff, but for now that's sufficient. So in terms of database, we'll have obviously user who will have uh, email, login, password, um, registration, uh, date. What else do we need something else? Um, I don't think I mean, we can do email validation, maybe but we can do without it at first, we can add it later. And then we will have a question entity, which would have um, question text, which would have answers, which would be again an object that would have user and answer value. What else do we have here? Um, creation date, I guess. And, uh, and expiration date, I guess would be the better term here, right? Because we want to know when the question actually expires so that we don't overdo it, for example, for the control questions about weather. 
Right, I think uh, that's it. Maybe, you know, later we can add something like discussion, but I think for the uh, very basic version that should be sufficient. So let's do this. Um, we can start with the creating database structure. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new database folder and uh, I'm going to create index.js as usual. And let's save that. Um, so we're going to, why is it? Oh, okay, I screwed up my git ignore. Yeah, you know, that happens. Um, I think it needs to be this way. Wait, is it, um, what is wrong with my, where's my terminal? For some reason, sales started screwing up my key rebindings lately on um, on this. I don't even know what the symbol is, like non-US backslash as it's called here. And wait, did I kill hyper term or something? Where the hell is my terminal actually? That doesn't seem to work. Okay, I mean, oh, like, fine, whatever. I'll just use terminal like this. Um, get status, there we, uh, um, right. Let's jump into the project and see. Now it works, perfect. Uh, server DB is actually, so that's what we need to ignore, right? We need to ignore server DB. And let's check. Perfect. So let's do this git commit um, fix db uh, files ignore git ignore. There we go. Let me paste my passphrase here. There we go. Cool. Signed commits are always nice. All right. So then we have the database here and we're going to create the user JS and we're going to create the um, question JS, right? Okay, cool. So um, for the database, we're going to use um, Thinky.js. Uh, so you can see here I've been visiting it quite frequently. It's a nice ORM for RethinkDB. So I'm going to just copy this thing and go to the hyper term and install it. Uh, we actually need to go into the server here. I'm going to uh, npm install minus minus save it. So we get it. Um, actually, I think I haven't launched the database yet. So yeah, yeah, whatever. Um, Docker, let's have a look. Yeah, I don't think I have it stopped either. Okay, so we'll do npm run db, uh, come on, start. Yep, yep, right. Start, there we go, thank you very much. Okay, so now we have it running, perfect. Uh, we can also fire up the, uh, the thing db administration console right away so that we can uh, check all the tables, indexes and whatever we create. Okay, we have that now. Um, let's clear that. So then I think we first actually need the connection. So what I'm going to do here is um, bleh, come on, come here. Import Thinky from Thinky, obviously. Come on, here we go. Cool. Uh, and then let's have a look. I really don't actually remember. So where was the docs? There's the docs. As you can see, you know, I'm not the person who actually remembers everything um, on from top of the head. So I have to actually look at the uh, docs and uh, how do you quick start? How do you um, configure the connection and everything? There was a, there we go, DB ready, that's what I wanted. So, and uh, we need, Thinky R, yeah, so you have to invoke it, right? So we would import it as a neat thinky. And then we would do export const thinky so, so that we basically have access to it from wherever we might need to. Not sure if we would have to, but uh, let's see. And then um, I don't know if we needed, yeah, I mean, fine. So let's also extract this R from it. This is the reference to the thing to be R that they use in their documentation. So we're gonna export it as well. Uh, in addition, so we got that. Uh, what else? There was the connect thing um, where you could specify actually, ah, there we go. So you invoke it with options, cool. So what we're gonna do now is create a config file, I guess in server would be Google config.js and um, yeah so we're gonna say export default 
Uh, no, I guess we don't need to export default because that will be not nice. We're going to export const db. There we go. So it's going to be our database config. And uh, what we're going to say is we're going to have a look here. What do we have? We have host, um, which for now should be just localhost. But once we get to the deployment, we would actually have to change that from the environmental variable. Uh, port, I think basically we can just leave it default one. I don't know if we would ever need to change it. Uh, we say that our database would be experts db, right? So let's call it this way. Um, what else? Oath key validate. We don't really need everything else here. It will use the thing db dash on its own, enforce missing, enforce extra. So fine. So we're going to enforce everything. And uh, now here, basically, we are, uh, let's say this npm packages and then our packages and then import so we're gonna import db config from ta -da 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 -da. where's my config there it is uh, and we're gonna say there we go so um let's let's you know what let's import it as db config because that's a bit more descriptive uh, it's, it's fine to name it db in there but since here we're gonna be like doing the uh database stuff i would rather do something um more uh, expressive. Okay, let's do it this way. I think that will be uh, that will look nicer. Basically, it would be easier easier to read. So init thinky done expert. Um, uh, yeah, just let's let's just say expert for now. Fine. Um, right. So after that, what do we have to do? We have to actually define the user models, right? So we can go to quick start here, and um, there we go. So we have user. Um, let's start with the user. We don't need config anymore. Um, let's go to the user. Yeah, let's do this. So um, if I'm gonna import this from here, yeah. So basically, the idea would be, I guess, to move that to new file because if we don't move it, we will actually have cyclic dependencies, which is not nice. Um, so I'm gonna create um, Thinky JS. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just copy all of that here and then expert thinky R from here. I think that's actually all we would need. And then here I would just say expert thinky R from uh, thinky.js, right? So we just export it from the other file directly, which means then we don't have cyclic dependencies and I can just import um, thinky from thinky. So that's our local instance. And then we can say const user and we are going to export it right away. It's going to be a model user. And uh, now we're just going to take those fields that we defined and um, paste them here. So we're going to say email is going to be type string and it's going to be required. Um, login is obviously uh, going to be exactly the same. So I'm going to just paste this here, password is exactly the same. And then um, let's call it, yeah, I mean, registration date is fine, right? So it's gonna be type date. I think, um, do they have an example here? No, they don't. Um, da -da 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 schemas, that's what I want. So we are gonna say type date, and then um, there is, I think, think, wait, what was it? Default. Yeah, there we go. So I can say default and we can say error now, which will basically default to the current uh, date, whatever it is. Okay, we need this type thing as well, which I think comes from, yeah, from inside the thinky. So we're gonna go over here. And since the only place where we're actually going to be using it is the database, I am yeah, thinky type R. I'm not gonna export it from index, but I am gonna import it over here. Although, you know, that does make a lot of sense. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna import thinky here. That seems like over, over engineering things. I just keep it simple. Um, so I'm gonna just do um, thinky, append thinky right here, right? So that's all we actually want. Uh, thinky type string and then thinky R now extra space, right? Thank you, Linter. You are very helpful. All right. So now we have the user model here. 
I'll just copy that and uh, create the question model in the same manner. So we've done that. Questions, uh, there we go. So there we go, let's just kill that. Uh, and in this case, uh, that was a bit too harsh. What we would need is text. Uh, that's gonna be question. And then question over here. So we're gonna need text which is required. We are gonna need uh, creation date, which is again gonna be date default now. Expiration date is something that we need, right? Uh, so let's let's kill those two. And then um, expiration date. So we're not gonna set any defaults here, or maybe we should. No. Let's not, let's allow user to pick whatever he wants, but say this is just basically required, right? And um, we did that. And now we want answers, which would be an array of, uh, let's look up at the schemas, how you define arrays here. Yes, yeah, so you can just say array, type array schema, there we go. So that's what I want, right? So, uh, think it type array schema and then uh, there's going to be actually tie uh, like yeah thinky type object i believe and then we're gonna say yeah there we go schema so let's let's close that correctly and then basically um yeah let's let's format it a bit nicely because this is not not very readable there we go much nicer so and then we need a user which will be thinky type uh, string and we're gonna need answer which is whoops which is gonna be thinky type uh, string and actually both of those should be required right because we should not be allowed to create any answers that uh, don't actually have any content cool so we created user in question here what we lacking now is we need to export user from uh, the user there we go um, we don't need js here actually and then export uh, question from question right there we go so we created a database and um, if i i mean let's just let's just i think if we import uh, so another thing is basically we need to initialize the database and then start the server. So I'm gonna import uh, Thinky from uh, DB over here. And then what I'm gonna do is there is this uh, DB ready, which is a promise, um, which basically notifies us when the database is uh, ready. So I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say DB thinky then, uh, ready, uh, DB ready then. So basically we'll wait for the database and let's just log it. So we actually need the whole thing. So um, database ready, starting service server, right? Okay, so uh, wait for DB to initialize. Okay, so theoretically, if I um, go to the terminal now and do npm start, we should, there we go, so database ready. And now if we go to the everything to be um, console, we'll see that we have two tables now. Uh, and if we go to the Explorer, we can just uh, say database experts database, there we go. And then we should be able to see um, no, let's please show me it. Yeah, there you go. So we have question and user as tables and you know, it works exactly as we expected. So what I'm gonna do now is um, I'm gonna stop this and um, add this stuff in this folder. So basically I want this to do because it will be cleaned afterwards, right? So let's check that we added everything uh, cool git commit so we're gonna commit and I'm gonna say add um, basic database connection and user uh, 
that's user um, and uh, question schema definitions. There you go, I think that's good enough. So now we have the database. Um, now we can actually start writing the API, right? So we, uh, I would start with basically login registration and then we can add the profiles. Um, let's create the authentication folder here. And as usual, create the index.js right away. And basically what I want to do, what I want to do now is I want to take uh, Passport.js because you know I'm not the person who enjoys inventing his own bicycles and if there is existing uh, thing that basically fits my purpose I will use it right away so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this npm install passport here and we're gonna save it while it's installing uh, what we need to do is da -da -da -da, we actually need to uh, configure it. Yeah, there we go. So we need all that code and then we need to convert it to ES6, which is slightly annoying, but so we need, uh, oh, let's just call it passport.js, why not? All right, there we go. Uh, yeah, of course, it's going to throw us a lot of ESLint errors. Uh, so we're going to say import passport from passport. We're going to, um, yeah, I think we actually can make it in one import no, we can because it's a local strategy, right? Mm, so we need a import strategy as local strategy from passport local. That's what we want, but passport local is not installed. So yeah, I guess let's let's start with local strategy. Why not? Uh, we gotta install that as well. And while it's installing, we can say passport use new local strategy. So we don't really need it. We can just use the arrow function here. Uh, which works just as well um, and then so this is going to be npm packages so for that we are uh, it's going to be our packages and we need to import um, user from db right so that's our user so um, use uh, local strategy so here's what we gotta do we have username and password and uh, what we need to find is we're actually going to call it login because that's how we called it in um, our definition. And that's not how the uh, everything to be works. So we're going to do a filter. Um, uh, you know what? Yeah, I think, I think we're going to use the sync functions, right? Because this is more fun. So we're going to say that this function is actually a sync. So we're going to say, we're going to search for all users, await users, uh, filter gonna say limit one so that we don't have all those callbacks everywhere um, let's kill that there we go so uh, here we go so we're waiting for the yeah okay it doesn't like intonation there we go that should be much better um, right so and the flying cool so um, final users matching uh, with matching login so we try to find the user with the login with limit one, uh, we have to do run. So we got all the users, right? So we just take the first one, uh, that's like this, get the first match. All right, and uh, da -da 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 -da. okay, so basically then check if exists, basically just check if uh, the user exists we don't care about the message right now. We can do that later. And then uh, then we need to validate the password. So what we're going to do is since uh, the password here will be a plain string, uh, we're going to add one more utility, which will going to be called hash.js. So we need to um, hash the password. We need no JS crypto for that. Uh, da -da -da -da, there we go. So we need md5, it was an example here, summer, now I guess SHA1 would be, or SHA would be better, right? Uh, God, it's the API for crypto is a bit, I mean, I guess, you know, it's kind of universal. You can use it for everything, but for just hashing like a string, it's a bit pain, right? So get hashes. Yeah, key to string. 
Oh, come on. No, they don't actually have an example here, which is a bit weird. Uh, node crypto hash. Yeah, I'll just I'll just Google it. There's always there's always a good example from around. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, we need obviously crypto. So import crypto from crypto. There we go. And then uh, I'm gonna create hash, but I think. Yeah, so we actually uh, export, let's call it hash, and then we get a string in, uh, let's just do stir. There you go, and uh, after that, the MD5 is not very nice, so let's see which ones does it support. So SHA1, um, do we have any other SHA here? Uh, where's the list? Yeah, yeah, SHA 256 should be quite nice, right? So we're gonna just take this like this, uh, and um, yeah, right. Then you do update. So we're gonna sum update with a string, and then we are going to uh, digest it to hex and return actually, right? Uh, the problem with this is that right now we're doing it without salt. So basically anyone who can get a hands on a password uh, on a uh, password database, you know, can revert SHA to 56 because it's non algorithm. Uh, or, you know, at least use something like rainbow tables to uh, actually get the plain text password. So that's not very good. So we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add um, auth config here and we're gonna say uh, password salt, which I'm gonna go ahead and use my um, last pass here to generate something like um, 64 symbol length random string. I'm gonna just take that and put it here. Um, again, you know, we're doing it right now as sort of an hard coded way, but when we are doing that uh, for Deployment, this is going to be provided through the environmental variable. Okay, npm packages, and this is going to be... Um, someone was writing something to me. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, I see. All right, uh, da -da -da -da, let's go back here. Okay, so um, our packages, right. So we're going to import auth uh, as auth config from um, our config.js, right? And then uh, we're basically just concatenating this with our password salt. Done. So now this string is basically salted and unless the attacker knows the salt, he won't be able actually to do anything about it or you know, at least decoding will be very, very hard. Uh, it's a very stupid way of doing things, but it kind of works. Okay, other things we need to do is we need to say export um, hash from hash. There we go. So now we can just import it from the um, utils. So let's say import hash from, um, yeah, util. There we go. And uh, what we do here is we take the user dot password and compare it to hash password right so this will um, compare the uh, safe password in a database which we should save with hashing against the uh, plain text password that we get from the user so again we don't care about the message here we will do that on the other end and then if so uh, return user if successful. Cool. So this is uh, the setup for the strategy, but I think we actually also have to, yeah, specify the uh, serialization, deserialization uh, functions for passport. So in this case, uh, we can just use a single line arrow functions here. Um, we don't really want any fancy. So I think serializing, deserializing from and to ID should be uh, good enough. So serialization to ID is uh, straightforward. We just, you know, take the user ID and return it. That's it. Serialization from ID is a bit trickier. So we're gonna again do a sync function. 
uh, const user await uh, user get id run so this is going to be our user and once we get it we just um, yeah i think we actually should do the try catch here because it can fail uh, for example if user doesn't exist i'm gonna say user equal now and then um, so it's gonna be null user basically we assume that it, it completed and then if not then we're gonna be done e um, now right or false I guess there uh, let's just go through the same um, in the same way yeah so it's, we don't need to define user here all right so and yeah it expects return value which we don't want so we're just gonna do that I think it's a bit more consistent okay cool so that should uh, um, define serialization uh, serialize and this, this functions Okay, so we did that, we set up the strategy. Um, I think we are actually good to, oh yeah, we need to uh, connect some middleware here, right? Uh, so we need the cookie parser. Okay, so this passport, uh, we're gonna just import passport. So that basically once uh, our packages, once it, loads then you know it will be applied automatically and then ten, ten, ten. so what i need as well uh yeah as i was saying we need middleware um to, 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 we need app here don't care about index anymore uh config is not something we need as well so there we go we only have body parser here but we need cookie parser so uh we're gonna copy that um that and then add cookie parsing over here. I don't think that's actually correct because uh, since version four express split everything into a separate, like smaller packages. So I think it's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be a separate package here. So just gonna um, npm install it and uh, yeah, right. Um, there we go. npm install, Ugh, come on. No, 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 stop. There we go, save. I want you saved. So while it installs, uh, we are gonna say import cookie parser from, um, no, I don't want, it's not a local, no cookie pop. Where, where's my autocomplete for packages? There we go, so that should be fine. So we got the cookie parser. What else do we need? Body parser is something we have. Express session, uh, once again, I think that's a separate, npm package actually okay uh session there we go yeah so what is it express session cool just copy that part um install save there we go i'm trying to monitor the chat so if you have any questions feel free to ask uh, but you know i might get too uh, caught into the uh, development process and just not notice it so uh, please bear with me <laughs> session from session there we go and um, I think so what are the options let's just take that and then add session support all right so yeah there we go there is another um, secret so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to the config and uh, add session secret to a secret to a wolf here once again i'm going to just go over here and use last pass to uh, secure generate random string for it 64 symbols always nice so um did i know i haven't imported any config here so we're going to import auth as auth config uh, from uh, config.js there we go and then here we are going to use auth config dot um, session secret yeah so we're gonna leave all those flags as they basically recommend them here uh, I mean you know if you want to feel free to go through all of that and just you know the express has pretty decent uh, documentation on just about everything so it's always nice to read through that but I'm not gonna do that right now so we added that 
um, yeah, well, we need to use passport initialize and passport session. So add passport JS uh, and we have to, well, wait, wait, did I install the session or was it like, wait, wait, did I have more than one window? No, did I forget to install the session? Was that the issue? Let's see, uh, in PM, ah, it's express, so, okay, of course. Of course, it's express, the wrong one, there we go. Okay, cool. And then we are gonna import passport from passport. So it's gonna apply our passport to the express.js and then uh, once we import our authentication routes, it's actually gonna um, initialize all the other things that we care about over here. So what I'm gonna do now is I am gonna do uh, login.js and I'm gonna create register.js. Cool, and then um, this is gonna export default function that's gonna take in the app and then uh, set up everything for us. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna import setup auth roots here. Uh, that's the way I'm gonna call it. So I'm gonna import auth index.js. So this is the, our function and uh, then uh, set up authentication roots. And all we need to do is just to say this. So basically this is gonna set up all the authentication for us. Uh, I think we don't really need this file anymore. So we're gonna have login and uh, we don't need config. We have login register. There you go, cool. Okay, so here uh, we need, once again, let's do it export default app so it's gonna be app post slash API slash login. Let's do it this way. And then, you know, let's just say like this for now. It's just gonna be like request response. Uh, copy paste this into register. There we go. Uh, and um, I'm gonna uh, import those functions here now and just, you know, plug them in basically import register from register, uh, no, that's wrong, there we go. So login uh, app and then register, not JS, what are you doing? There we go, okay. You know, that's like the my preferred way of setting things up. It's essentially just uh, splitting it into separate files, but once you open this index.js, you clearly see what functions or what routes do you have and if you need to know uh, what exactly is going on there, you just open one of those files and you know, you see, okay, this is the registration API, this is what happens during it, and this is the login API, this is what happens during it. Okay, so we uh, are doing those two now. So before we can do login, we actually need to do registration. And um, so what we're gonna do is, uh, we are gonna say, use, uh, so we have login, we have pass, Word, not passport. And then we're gonna have password uh, repeat, right? Because we need to make sure that user actually entered the same uh, password. And we're gonna extract this from body. So get uh, user input. And then uh, what we need to do here is we need to import user from the, no, come on, come here, from, um, database, right? So again, this is gonna be a sync function. And here's the, here's the thing. So all the async functions are uh, promises, right? So if I would to leave it like this, it would actually, if something goes wrong inside of the body of this function, uh, it will actually just silently die. I mean, it won't silently die because we have this uh, unhandled rejection here for promises. But basically we want, it will be very hard to track what's going on. So what I like to do is I like to create this uh, async hel uh, um, or async, um, async request, I guess let's call it. And then uh, export const async request. So 
basically it's gonna take the callback uh, or rather it's gonna be a um, promise right I don't know how to call it correct so like in request response handler let's call it handler that's the best way probably and what it's gonna do is it's gonna do uh, it's gonna invoke the handler with request and response and uh, wait uh, so we're gonna do this thing and invoke it with request response and then we need to catch an error because that's the only thing that's basically we're interested in we don't actually need the whole function catch an error and then um, we need a logger and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna logger uh, error basically yeah no, not god damn it! Stop other completing this um, error during request, and then we just do e. There we go. Um, all right, I think yeah. I mean, it sh can be a one. No, it cannot be a one-liner. It doesn't quite fit. Okay, cool. Um, it's actually, I think, basically, if we do it this way, we would need to pass around or bind it, which is not nice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass a handler and this will return another function that will actually execute the handler. So uh, let's format it like this. So it's a bit more, a bit easier to understand, yeah? So we created a function that takes in a handler and returns a function that takes in request and response and applies this handler while catching the error. Okay, uh, we're gonna go here and export it from a sync request, there we go. And what I'm gonna do now is our uh, packages here, import a sync request from mm -hmm, till, there we go. And I'm just gonna wrap it over here uh, in a sync request, which basically means that any errors that are dropped inside of that function will now be caught without usage of that external uh, ender. So you know, all is nice. All right. So what we can do now, we got the login password. Uh, first thing to do is obviously uh, password. Uh, check the password validity. If it's not valid, then uh, we just say status. Uh, okay, HTTP status codes. That's what I want. So what do we say? We say, um, I guess for 100 would be good maybe yeah so probably 400 is a good status and then we do send error um password pass bleh, passwords do not match there we go and then we return right so first check the passwords okay and then if passwords are good then uh, we uh need to hash password because we want to store them as uh, plain text. Uh, so we're going to import hash from util here and then we are going to hash uh, password. And once that is done, we need to say await user. Um, no, first we create the user. So const user will be new user and then we say login password is uh, in this case hash password. So what else did we have there for a user? Do we have to input anything else? Uh, email, right. Uh, you know what, let's ditch email for now. I think that's not actually important. Uh, we can add it later once we say decide that we want email validation, but for now just user and password is fine. So we create the user and then we say user uh, save. So this is gonna save the user. And then once that is done, we're gonna say status 200 and then send uh, user back. But that will actually send password, so that's not something we wanna do. Uh, we actually just wanna say uh, 204, right? So this is the created status. Uh, no, 201, I'm always messing those up. And we just want to do send status. So then we'll uh, send status 201. And uh, after that, 
we can um, authorize basically. So um, I've actually created a whole bunch of code and haven't committed anything which is bad and that is not something I should have done. So what I'm gonna do now is do interactive add and uh, let's see, what do we have here? We can, uh, yeah, we actually have untracked as well. So add untracked. Well, let's see, let's add this one first. And um, quit. So yeah, I mean, I could have done that without this. So diff, bit, uh, da, yeah, so git commit add async request helper. Then uh, we can add source util hash commit add simple hash function yeah uh, get status so let's see what we can commit as well okay um, we can also say source db user so we remove the email right so I can say remove email field uh, from user for now Maybe we we'll add it later. No, clear. Okay. Um, let's see. What do we have else? So this is all passport JS preparation, right? Uh, and then let's source oath. No oath. Come on. There you go. So it's as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess I actually wrote the whole. Um, so we can do right. Let's do it this way. We can add config. We can add package. We can add app. Uh, we can add. Oh uh, yeah, I forgot to add the util index, which is not nice. But let's just add it right now. Source auth index. Um, yeah, of course. Git add. Um, source auth passport yeah I mean if I would I would need to yeah because I already imported them right yeah I mean okay let, let's just let's just add everything right okay so some add passport JS and set up basic out methods let's just call it this way that should be fine so um, login actually is something that is done by Passport.js. So this is something we don't really have to do ourselves. And uh, there we go. So we can use Passport Authenticate here. We don't actually need, um, so we don't actually need to redirect or anything. We just need to authenticate. And then I think if we just do it this way, because uh, it's a middleware, so basically if it's successful, the next request will be called. Let's import passport from um, passport. And then once the next request is called, we can say uh, res send user, right? So this should... Um, so it should add the request to user, uh, sorry, user to the request the other way around. And then basically once we authenticate it, we can just send it back to uh, the user in theory. So uh, we actually finished those, but now we need to test them. So what I'm gonna do now is um, first, I'm gonna commit my login function, even if I'm not sure if it works or not. Add login uh, route and logic. And uh, after that, I am gonna go and write some tests. So I'm gonna duplicate this and say um, auth. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm first gonna do register. And we're gonna post register. Um, so let's uh, say should register should fail let's let's first try failing i should fail to register with mismatching passwords right so we're going to post to api slash register 
we are gonna expect 400 and we are gonna expect uh, Jason and we are gonna expect the um, this exact body right so res body they're gonna expect no error I think it doesn't throw error during that so we remove this from here and um, actual body expected body retrieve uh, body yeah and then theoretically um, yeah I of course I forgot to do send so we need to send login um, test then password um, say one or three and password repeat will be three to one right so that should fail and then here we're gonna let's comment this out because we don't care about that right now so we're gonna oath um, require authentication tests there we go and now if we go to terminal and do npm test it should theoretically pass unless it throws error uh, equal I guess does it did I use shallow equal because I need yeah so we need deep equal there we go so let's test it again and done so why oh okay because it's no wait it didn't creating a pool of so why doesn't oh because the database is open right so it's going to use the app but the app uh, this is a tricky question. How do we make the database shut down after testing? Uh, okay, so um, what we actually need to do is we need to look at the thinky docs and see how do we close down all the connections. Is there something like tear down or destroy or whatever? Um, thinky are errors create model um, importing relation virtual feeds um, I, I guess okay close feed is not what we need since it's using the um, we think the b dash that's what we're gonna look at right so no GS driver let's see um, we got R run then connect is there something like disconnect method close connection close okay so we do have this connection close thing but now that's per query you always have to do that in uh, to, 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 to the server connect pipe uh -huh. okay let me see connection pool If you have finished executing, you want to know the ah, there we go. So that's what we want to do, right? So, in addition to our test script, we are gonna import R from uh, source uh, DB, and then once it's done, we're actually gonna close DB connections, right? So uh, in theory that should work because the uh, tape tests are synchronous, so that should work just fine. And no, none of the pool have been, uh, have an open connection and failed to open a new one. Okay, so that's, it does not close not because of this one. So why the hell does the test not exit correctly? Uh-huh. I guess we have to actually that's a really good question um, should we do it at the end of the test I mean theoretically it should try to do it after test but it's no okay so I guess we would have to say uh, here to wait for the um, to wait for the connection right so we wait for it over here but basically we need to wait for it here as well so that's uh, no that was the wrong button that's what we want right and then we import thinky here so since thinking initializes anyway we wait for it to actually start up um, no blank lines yeah yeah 
Okay, so we wait for it to start, then we execute the test, and then we drain the connection so that everything is nice and clean, in theory. And it works, perfect. Okay, so now we can see that it actually fails just fine. Uh, now let's create a test that will actually pass. Uh, should register with given uh, username and uh, password. Okay, then we get our T here uh, and request app post. So we post to the same uh, register URI. Uh, we send this time, we will send login test um, password uh, 103. Password repeat is going to be 103 as well. So, you know, we are actually doing it correct. Uh, we expect. 201 uh, and uh, that's actually it right so because we just want to know that there are no errors and it didn't fail so what we're gonna test here is just one uh, test to see if the errors are blank because there is nobody returned we can actually skip even getting the rest here so we got that and uh, once that is done it should theoretically work. And we got a whole bunch. What is going on? None of the pools have opened connection and failed to open. What? But I waited for the DB ready. I get, no, wait, that, why? Okay, what is going on here? So we wait for the DB and start this thing and we wait for the DB here as well, but it still says that no pools are opened. Um, am I missing something? Thinky, yeah, so we got a new Thinky here. It expressed Thinky, so theoretically that should work, right? So why the hell it doesn't work? Um, let me think. Let me think, where's the hybrid term here? So, what exactly does throw this? This is the everything to be dash, yeah. Immediate callback, thinky. Uh, let's let's try that again. I see a bit more nicely formatted output. Cool, draining the pool. Oh, does it drains? Yeah, okay. So, wait, I thought tape tests are supposed to be synchronous, uh, which is a bit stupid actually so let's try to do that but then it won't end test right yeah so it finished them but now it doesn't end okay now i am confused i thought tape was supposed to be synchronous and all tests are executed one by one um usage Test and skip, okay, equal throws. Or was it actually that you have to, uh, I think you have to wrap it in a test. Is that what it was? Um, tape JS after, so Mocha has this sort of magic stuff that you can do like before and after that's guaranteed to execute it before and after, uh, but tape is not, well, yeah, so you have to wrap it in test. Okay, cool. So basically, if we say um, test clean up and we just do that, right? Uh, I, I don't think we actually need to label it. So we just say clean up and then do this. And that should be working, right? Yep. Okay. And uh, yeah, obviously, we have to say and here which is is there a nicer pattern here let's see uh, set up tear down yeah so you basically have to say and cool right so that actually now should uh, pass okay uh, not okay test exit without ending um, oh because the script Wait, it shouldn't close. Why the hell does it close this? Exited without ending. Um, I mean, right. I wonder if we can say T plan zero and... 
and just tell him to it's not not gonna test anything just close nope expected uh yeah okay that's a bit annoying so theoretically i mean right you know what i'm just gonna do that that is really hacky or we can Im immediate we can just do that right so we can just set immediate and then end so it will end and then execute it uh the next thing in the stack so it should work perfectly well cool also i don't like this output um no um there's tape let's see which which tape tape spec maybe does that looks nice let's see do they have example here no oh yeah they do oh yeah that looks quite nice so let's let's do this um come on what are you doing there we go tape spec and then i think you just pipe it yep so let's our package json here uh, to, 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 to npm test top spec there we go so if we do npm test right now we should see a very nice output uh yep perfect that looks really nice we have our login there and uh, actually this login is a bit annoying so what i am gonna do now is i'm gonna say uh and wait node and uh testing so this will set the environment to testing and i'm gonna go into my logger and say that uh so we, we do the info for production but I don't want to do the nested ternary uh, expressions. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, wait, which we do use the Babel preset zero, right? Let's check. Does the Babel zero has the um, what do you call them? The do do expressions? Yeah, it has. Okay, cool. So what we can do here then is we can say do right so we can wrap it and do and then if it's production then it's gonna be info else it's gonna be debug and then um if it's gonna be testing um we are gonna say uh, what was it Winston JS was the highest level of logging. There was like info debug uh, do, 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 do. info or the levels log warn uh, silly verbose error. Yeah, so we're gonna just say we want to see only errors, right? And we want this. Um, now the question is, did I use the do expression correctly? <laughs> Let's check. So theoretically, we should it should work and uh okay that is not how it works uh but it looks like this here so why what am i missing do expression execute try and rebel okay i mean um yeah right uh plugins transform do expressions right so the question is why the hell doesn't it not work um what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna go to node modules here uh babel uh, that's a lot of packages presets stage zero right and i'm gonna see if it's actually in there um there you go yeah so it is there do expressions so now the question is what am i doing wrong uh from you don't know js perfect that's a very good book so we're gonna just have a look at it maybe you cannot assign it to object properties which doesn't actually make a lot of sense but um expression side effects now that's yeah that's the do so maybe you cannot do expression is because block and blah 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 okay 
which is a bit annoying, but let's try to do it this way, I guess. So let's say level, and then we do do expression. No, this still says no unused expressions, which doesn't make any, th yeah, it's the wrong command. npm test. Right, okay. Uh, oh, is it because, yeah, okay, I think, ah, I see. So, um, um, let me think. Yes, lint. Let, let's, let's first try yes, lint disable line. So, um, I have a kind of, is it just because the yes, lint doesn't understand the expressions yet, or maybe I didn't enable some plugin? Uh, okay, it's still node and testing. Uh, which did I testing? So it I it's probably it applied it to ESLIN, right? So we need that way. Am I doing this correct now? There we go. So I don't see any errors. But uh, let's see ESLIN do expression. So our our issue is actually. Yeah, no unused expressions. So let's see. Uh, to solve this, it identifies inside block. Closing in favor, ESLint plugin Babel. Okay, so it's unsolved uh, issue. Cool. Then I will just leave it for now like this and we'll add to do remove ESLint disable lines once the bug is fixed. And then bug reference is um, gonna be, uh, nope, this one, right? So I'm just gonna put it here. And uh, once it's solved, we can just clean this up and make it look real nice. Right, so we got that now. Um, <laughs> cool, um, so we got that, we got registration. Um, let's check our database because I think right now it's actually what we did is um, if we run it, we will have a bunch of users with the same login, which is wrong, right? So we don't want to uh, register the same user over and over again. So um, hash password. What we're going to do now, um, save new user, is add another check here. So check if login already taken that's what we're gonna do so what we are gonna do is uh, const users we're gonna say await user filter uh, login and then do run and then if users length is greater than zero so basically if there are any users there we're gonna send status um, Okay, what will be the best HTTP status for this? Let's see. I guess, I mean, bad request probably is okay. Malform too large. No, that doesn't sound right, right? So maybe, maybe um, forbidden is probably, yeah, I guess forbidden is the closest one. Um, okay, so username already. Yeah, let's, let's just say user already exists, right? And then return. So, and um, what we're going to do now is we are going to should fail to register with a uh, same username. And uh, we're going to just register with uh, same username, but different password again. But actually the first one will fail now because we already have a bunch of users in our database. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the table here. And so it's now clean and empty. And the thing is, basically if we run the tests in sort of in form of continuous integration, we'll be fine because the database will always be fresh. But uh, wiping the database manually here is not very nice. So I think there was a library. What? Oh, right, because I um, 403 was it? Yeah, so and then we need to actually uh, do this. So yeah, that should be 
passwords do not match and in this case we want user already exists there we go okay so this should test it uh, now the thing is yes yeah, I was saying doing the database is not very nice I think there was a JavaScript implementation of uh, RethinkDB JavaScript implementation that we basically can use as a, a spin up polyfill Reculi. There we go, that's what it was called. So here's what we are gonna do we are going to npm install save dev Reculite. We're going to use it as a drop in replacement for our uh, database. So it should be installed now. Yeah, cool. And those peer dependency annoying things. I hope they update the packages soon. Okay, we're going to import Reculite from Reculite. Uh, no, Reculite. Well, why is it doesn't. I guess it didn't update correctly. Okay. Uh, and. Um, Okay, so then we need to create the server. Right, so it's gonna be a server, then we create fake TCP connection. And, uh, okay, so we actually need to say to pass it to the, which means we have to change the way that we initialize the database connection a bit, right? So because right now we are passing this stuff right from the config, but that won't work for testing. So um, we actually want we actually want um, to export. Yeah, that's, that's a bit problematic with Thinky. Can you actually pass the bind it to object? That looks a bit weird. Right, okay. Meteor thing to be. Let me think. So, pool false. Then you call connect. Um, let's see, Thinky. I wonder if anyone used it with Reculite. Maybe there's an existing. Yeah, there we go. So you cannot do create connection mock response query. Okay, so we, now we can say query run, but I don't want to do that because it, <laughs> that would mean I have to change half of my database, right? So that's a bit annoying. Um, what the hell is this? NPM list Reculite, yeah. No, that's not what I want. Uh, just a complete system or a glide workflow with anyone. Uh -huh. Oh, so he uses the Reculite as the command line utility to spawn it and then connect to it. Okay, I, that actually might work. So basically, um, it uh, feels a bit backwards, but basically what we need to do is test, we need to first uh, execute that Reculite, right? So we need to start it and then uh, to do that, we actually have to uh, kill our database. Uh, experts, just kill it and then remove it. Cool. So. Um, and then basically he does the, yeah, so we need import exec from um, child process. That list, okay, so he tries to list it, which basically to figure out if there is, if it's installed. And then he does the start error which is, this is what we're interested in, right? Okay, that is a lot of tabs. Um, okay, you're gonna have Reculite. Okay, why does he 
kill he tries to kill it first which doesn't make any sense that's actually what we want to do afterwards right so this instead of our uh, pool drain we just do that uh, I guess we don't really care about the I don't like the way that this works basically because uh, okay let's see let's let's first spawn it correctly so what we want to do is we want to spawn uh, here we will need spawn here and uh, we don't care about air anymore so regular spawn so let regulate there we go that's all we care about so we're gonna spawn it as detached we do not need to provide any uh, params to it. Um, Reculite is running. Uh, do we care about that? Yeah, so let's let's do it this way. I don't really think let's just reformat it a bit. Reculite is running. I don't care about the coloring here. Come on, stop messing up my quotes. There you go. Um, why does it do process exit zero? I'm, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, uh, I'll just comment it out for now to see. And then once we are done, what we will do is just reculite and then we need the child process node.js there was the command to shut it down actually right so once you spawn process there is like exit or something um, spawn there we go and then on 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 child uh, ignore exec sync spawn sync child process events uh, disconnect kill there we go that's what we want so we just want to kill it right with um, with the default signal is fine right it, it provides something yeah it goes to turn by default so that should be fine uh, we have some linting errors here data which is not used uh, let's just output it here and see what exactly is going on so let's do it this way. I uh, will, yeah, will complain about the consoles missing semicolon. There we go. Um, theoretically, let's see if that actually works. And no, it doesn't. Okay, now it's working. Oh, no, wait, wait. Failed to open a new one. Okay, so we get a ton of errors. Right. Um, it's because the reculite starts and only then we should start the tests. Okay, uh, cool. So actually, oh man, that's that's getting so bloody complicated. <laughs> I was hoping we could have like nice and simple tests here, but looks like if we wanna do it correctly, it's always ends up like this. Okay, so we're gonna start it first. Gonna take all of that. Um, and we're gonna put it inside of this, right? So we only care, we only wanna run tests once the database is actually running. So do that. And now it works, cool. But, and, oh yeah, obviously be, be because, 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 because it doesn't exit because I removed the um, R, um drain there we go so we need that light set in immediate so we need to immediately so we basically we first close drain the connections then we kill the uh, database and then we end the uh, thing we actually don't care about the reculite exiting unless something goes wrong so we don't care about that logging as well we don't care about that as well and that looks like a nice test case so if we run test again theoretically we got one error expected created got forbidden i guess reculite stores stuff in the database is 
that it? Uh, it's probably have some cash or something, right? Let's see. Okay, so now the question is, how do I specify uh, to regulate or offset debug? Uh, Mini example roadmap. Okay, that, do they have actually any documentation about the command line flags? Um, let's see, node modules being regulate. Help. Driver port, port offset. Okay, they only have port offset, which doesn't make any sense for me. Um, right, so I guess we go to reading the source code, which is not the best way, but you know, whatever. Um, okay, maybe if we do debug, it will tell us what exactly um, it does I actually have installed Recolite globally because I'm not using the no I don't okay so cool let's see ah oh, right I am putting the arguments in the wrong place of course that's the way it should be so we don't actually have any debug info which is slightly annoying now, where does it have cache? Library um, database. Table, utils, new value. Old. Okay, those are the way it works. Okay, let's let's see what it actually does. Let's see from, from the top up, right? So, okay, debug, new server. All right, so it creates the new server thing which is where is the server wait, 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 wait. so lib index okay it's an index let's see create a new server uh with server protocol connections databases init uh, name id create server so we got init and create server New connection, protocol, listen, stop, I think DB, new database. Okay, so I think it creates new database. Database is coming from where? Database is dear name database JS. Okay, this one. So table and util. Okay, um, table and util table primary key indexes key blah 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 get type of delete insert how the hell does it actually write single insert I mean it should store it somewhere persistently right since it's trying to I mean since it has the old document in there but like where the hell does it stores maybe we can just say reculite uh, let's see do we have like clear database or something clean cache how do you run this as a process no leave node yeah there we go this no, no, no. Okay, actually run, no, no, wait, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, all right, um, does it have anything in config? No, it doesn't. Right, so how the hell do we clean that? I mean, one way would be obviously to just containerize right now and run it in a clean container every time, but that's stupid because then we cannot test it locally, which kind of sucks. Those tests look strange. Okay, uh, writing data, is that what we want? Insert, catch finally, insert queries. Nah, those are just a bunch of queries, right? I mean, I guess we can run the like DB drop in the very, like after the database initializes, but 
that feels I mean okay let's just you know what I'm, I'm like before that we're gonna write uh, basically yeah let's just let's just do it this way so we're gonna do um, our no, th yeah, think he should be sufficient or no R. Wait, um, let's have a look at everything DB docs. So it's basically gonna be RDB exp um, that's needed to be from con. Oh man, and was well, starting so nicely. <laughs> okay, import um, DB as DB config from. Um, no, that's a bit too much, I guess. All right, we're on uh, config.js, yeah. DB config, um, and we need, what was it, uh, DB. Table uh, user delete, so we just clean it. Um, yeah, I guess we can just make it a sync, right? And then uh, wait for it. There we go. Wait, delete. Uh, why don't you like, ah, right, of course. So in theory, now it should clean the database first and then start, cool, now it passes. That feels hacky as hell, but I don't see any better way right now. We can uh, try to figure it out later. Clean the database. Test normal registration. I mean, yeah, I guess tests should be self-descriptive, right? Those are fine and close DB connections. Cool. So the registration is now works and tested. Uh, I guess it's actually a good time to commit because we did a bunch of things. Uh, no, git, I want git. God damn it. Right, uh, tab spec, so we added spec. Um, git add current folder, cool. Um, let's check once more. So we added Reculite for testing. We added tab spec for nicer results. We check for duplicate, yeah, I guess. Uh, let's do reset. Um, so what we need to do is register. No, a diff is, yeah, that's what I want, right? Okay, yeah, so we need to first do this uh, disallow registration of multiple users with same uh, login that's what we want right and um, what else mm -hmm. so i would add the source util some uh, you um only show errors during test logging. Uh, that is <laughs> that is not English. Only show errors during testing. So that's uh, I guess log errors during testing will be a better phrasing. Cool. And now we can add everything else, and that would be basically unit tests for. Um, we actually need to uncomment this, right? There we go. So we add a top, we added those tests, and then if I run npm test right now, it should all pass nice and easy, right? Okay. Why the hell it only runs one test suit? That what is register login? Um, so test uh, yeah for foreigner. Yeah. Um, I guess we have to consolidate this into one test suit. Maybe that's why it doesn't work. Uh, which doesn't seems nice. But uh, basically, what we can do is we can. Mm, let me think. So basically we want to set up the database and wait until it's active and only then we test. And uh, 
So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this main JS. I am gonna take um, this stuff. So let me think. Let's duplicate it and call it say core. I'm gonna copy all that stuff from out here. But we don't care about Thinky and App here, right? No, we don't care about Thinky, we don't care about App here. We don't care about request here, so we just need, we don't care about tape here as, no, we do care, we only need one instance of tape here. So after that, we do test, and then this is where our tests will be. All right, and um, so we clean out test from here and then export default function, which will take in test as an argument and then execute all the tests here, right? So uh, tests, reculite instance, wait for start. Uh, so then we import core from core and then I'm gonna execute tests. Um, so we're gonna say core test and then we're gonna do the same for authentication so we don't care about the whole database stuff anymore. Um, let me think what else I don't need this as well right so I just need this and then export default test like this. Um, mm -hmm. Reformat it a bit. Uh, we don't need tape, we don't need spawn here, we don't need thinky, and we don't need db here. Perfect, that looks much better. And theoretically, uh, if we import now auth from here, do auth test, uh, and now run npm test. That should run all of our tests, right? Perfect. It works. Cool. Very cool. Okay. Uh, so we got our old test working. We got our new test for registration working. We got the bootstrap that set up the clean database in the dash mode and then kills it once everything is done. Um, we don't actually need that anymore, right? So we just need the main. Uh, let's see, npm test. So I should run those nine tests without any issues. Perfect, cool. So login register. Uh, I guess now we can actually commit this stuff. Add, uh, so cool, git uh, use. Okay, uh, let's do a proper commit message here. So let's see, use Reculite as test uh, database, add tests for uh, register flow, done. Okay, and now once we've got the registration, what we need to do is, um, you know what? Let's let's split it. Uh, we don't need that. Let's rename it to register. Then basically that's gonna be register yes, and then this is gonna be register, and then we are gonna have a set separate set of tests for login. I'm just gonna duplicate that and uh, should login with existing username and password. So I'm gonna do the login um, test and password one to three. So that's the user we created during the uh, registration. And if we go to the login path right now, I should actually get the user, um, let's actually change it a bit. So we're gonna say user, user, right? So it's basically we can actually extract it from there. So it's gonna be expect 200, uh, expect content type to be JSON. And then we got the response. So we are gonna have expected body, which will be 
thing is that we don't know uh, the whole body, right? Because we don't know the ID of the user from the database. So what I'm going to do is, um, should we just get the, basically we should just check, I guess, for the same login and that it actually returns uh, things. So const uh, actual body res body. So we need to equal actual body user. Um, first of all, we should check that actual body user is okay, right? Uh, exists. And then we should check that login uh, equals test. Login matches request. So um, we should also check for failures for registration, but we are going to do that in a second. So I'm going to comment that out real quick. Import login uh, from login. There we go. I'm going to command those tests out because we don't need them right now. We're going to log in test. And now once we go to hyper term and do npm test, uh, oh yeah, well, it won't work because we need the registration before, right? So we actually have to go through all the tests. Okay, no error. Uh, there's actually error. Got 400 bad request. Uh, why is it bad request? Can I read login of undefined? Okay, so actually the user doesn't exist and we don't really see any errors here. So. Okay, um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna um, yeah, right, run db start. So we're gonna start the, I think, where? Where is our, where? Wait, 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 wait. Does it? Okay, oh, I guess it was me who didn't. Okay, one, three, six, oh, eight. There we go. Okay, um, it was me who didn't kill it proper. Wait, wait. Huh? Okay, yeah, right. All right, 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 right. That's that's all my bad. So let's now it should work. Cool. And now we are just gonna do npm start, which is going to start our uh, database. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use the um, HTTP localhost 8080 API register, and I'm gonna say that I'm gonna. Um, Send there, I guess you can just do it like this test password one of three password repeat um, one of three. So that should register us. And if we have a look at database, perfect. And then now if we send post to um, HTTP local post AG API login. Um, login test password 103. Bad request. Cool. So, what's the error? No error. Okay. That is curious. Um, am, I, am I using the password? Password JS wrong? I guess that's the thing, right? Um, no idea. No, that's not what I want. Yeah, so just post open ID authenticate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let me think. Does it need a callback or something? Passport authenticate provider success failure. Oh, I think think I know because it expects the um, right I think I remember why so I might have screwed up in passport setup because passport expects 
login field to be username. So what we need to do actually is we need to go to Vesport local. And yeah, there we go. So we need a username field. It's gonna be the first object, uh, which is the config. And we're gonna say username field is actually login, right? So I don't think pass request to callback session. Yep, okay, cool. So we're gonna redirect and uh, essentially what we wanna do in login action is we wanna wanna see if record user, so basically if the user is actually there, we send otherwise status uh, 40 HTTP status code. So what do we have as a status code for unauthorized? I keep forgetting that stuff, uh, forbidden 403 send error, error logging in, right? And that's it. So that's what we want to do. And now, uh, if we restart our server, we already have our user in the database. So if we send that, it works. Cool. So we actually get the user now. And if we now docker stop, um, Experts DB, let's kill that thing. Cool. Uh, if we do npm te uh, test, it should. Uh, what? Uh huh. Okay, let me. Th uh, so it's. Yeah, okay basically doesn't kill Reculite correctly and it fails on the first right okay so I screwed up somewhere with um, spawning and um, database all right so Reculite we don't need debug stuff right do we actually need detached flag here so Reculite uh, spawn. Let's see what well, was this issue. Yeah, I know that it's down now. I don't care. Um, there was this snippet. What he does is data process exit. Why does he exit? I don't. Is it like a separate script? Oh, I guess he basically, I see, because it starts in detached mode, he then launches the PQL minus F Reculite. Uh-huh. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I mean, you don't have any control over that, right? So, no JS child process. I wonder if we can come up with a better solution. <coughs> Sorry. All right, so he has detached thing uh, parent child uh, prepare child to run dependently so if I basically we don't want it, we, we just want to spawn but not detached right and then um, let's actually see what kind of data is coming out here regular data data so that should yes and then npm test Okay, so this is, but why does it actually start doing anything before it gets the data, which is a bit weird. Hmm, I guess because Thinky is initialized automatically, right? So basically when we say yeah, so because we say here, uh, do this. Um, so what we need to do is we need to export default function, which will now. How do we do this? We need the Thinky instance, but we don't need it to connect before we tell it to connect. 
Hmm. Right. So I guess we are gonna do it this way. We're gonna say this is thinky. I'm gonna say thinky is um, that feels so if thinky then I'm just gonna return thinky so basically if we already have an instance just return it otherwise we will initialize it and return it afterwards right so this is what we want to do and then we don't export thinky here but yeah so we can export r as well so basically we're gonna export initialize uh, function here right so let thinky and this is gonna be our instance holder that means we have to rewrite the mm, yeah okay uh, that does not looks very good okay let's undo that stuff let me think uh, is there a better way is there a better way of doing that so that now works I mean basically we can So basically, if we don't actually import those, no, we are still gonna import thinky over here, right? So it's still gonna trigger. Um, right, that's a that's a bit of a problem. But I mean, the thing is, the tests do not fail. Okay, cool. Uh, I wonder if it will actually connect to the database eventually. And my cats are fighting. Okay. Uh, slow growth mode. Cats are going crazy over there. Okay, so it looks like it actually won't connect uh, because of too many errors, I guess. Which is a bit annoying. So how do we delay this execution? Uh, essentially, yeah. So we want to start test after Thinky is ready, but we want to start preparing Thinky after the database is up. So um, can we actually? Delay that through using another. So if we start setting up the Reculite in the index, let's see. So we require that. Um, first, we actually require um, child process. On, right so we got that and this is what we're gonna do and um, we're gonna spawn the instance of Reculite here okay then we're gonna wait on uh, data uh, no that's not what I wanted to do and then to export default and it's going to be reculite right so we're going to pass it in so that we can kill it afterwards mm -hmm. that means that once we do that so get spawn Actually, actually won't spawn before the Babel hook, right? Um, then inside, once that is done, we require main, and that is 
start tests and we're gonna call start tests with Reculite. Unexpected require. Yeah, okay, I wanna have this global require rule, but that is not exactly what I want. So I wanna do it delayed and uh, that. No, let's see. Uh, do I have it running? No, I don't. Okay, npm test. Yay, it ran. Okay, now let's check. And it's not there. Nice. Okay, so I actually figured that out. Um, I'm gonna disable this rule. Yes, lint. Uh, what is it? Global require just for this file i'm going to say that don't require it because we want to do the tests after the database is actually up then we kill it then we insert yeah so that seems to be working um so right uh, we got the login working login here uh, and now we should test that the login uh, fails correctly so i'm gonna do is i am gonna send login with uh failed to log in with um, wrong password. So we're gonna first test that it doesn't log in with uh, incorrect password. And it's gonna 403 and error uh, login in. There we go. Um, yeah, so that should pass, right? Let's check. Um, forbidden, um, was it 403? What is going on? Should fail to log in with the wrong password. Expected 403, got 401. Uh, I guess that's from the passport GS. Right, 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 right. Okay, that's true. So we're gonna change it to 401 over here. And then uh, the actual body, yeah. So basically the passport GS doesn't actually return any body. So we're just gonna look for 401 right and then uh we should try to log in with non-existing user should fail to log in with non-existent uh user so we're gonna password whatever and uh, do not exist so basically it should as well 401 and that should pass Nice, we have 14 tests that run in 2.1 seconds on a clean database. Um, let's just check that Regulite is not in the memory. Perfect. Um, so we're finished with uh, login and um, let's add all of that. Uh, see, what did I do actually? Yeah, so we added the login validation. We fixed the issue with, let's, um, Let's actually reset this and add it uh, so with passport. So we fix the um, fix passport JS local setup use correct login uh, field. So what else? Um, get with login so we did we checked um validate user object after login we did that and uh, this is all test adjustments and uh, it actually so this all now works this now works uh yeah cool Some uh, fix uh, Reculite stopping after testing. Add login tests. Guess now, you know what? That's a bit too much. Let's uh, reset that stuff. And uh, basically, what we want is a test main, test index, right? Test auth is removed, and uh, so this is git commit fix reculite spawning and killing during testing. And now we add test 
so git commit, um, I guess we can actually reset. So we can reset register. Git reset. Yeah, okay. You know what? Let's just do git add test register. That's what we want to do, right? Git. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Um, move register tests to separate file. That's what we're going to do. And finally, login. Um, Adds login tests. Cool. So we have 15 commits and we now have um, authorization that is working and fully tested. I think that is going to be it for today's uh, live stream. So I'm going to publish it on YouTube as I said. I'm going to push all that stuff now so that you can have a look at the uh, source code. So I'm going to kill all that stuff since we don't need it. Um, yeah, I guess I'm just going to wrap it up now. Um, thank you for watching and uh, see you during the next live stream, I guess. We have uh, little stuff left to do. This should be relatively easy. And uh, those are pretty straightforward as this, you know, just the basic crude operations. Right. So, where's my OBS? Uh, thank you for watching and see you. Bye.